All right, everyone. It is me, Johnson Chan. Ah, and uh, well, hopefully everyone had a good yesterday, which is eh, starting to feel like it was like a pretty long couple of days, even though it was just simply yesterday, you know, like, what, 8, 12 hours ago. So anyway, I had like an okay night's sleep, but again, I took in a little, I ate a little too much ice cream and I made myself like three cookies. And, uh, well, that was more than enough to, uh, make me not get more than six hours of sleep, six and a half, which, you know, all right. So I felt a little tad bit groggy, but eh, that's just how it goes. All right. So we do have a lot to unpack and technically I'm still unpacking it in my head, just looking at it, but... In Greg's video yesterday, he said that depending on, he's going to take like a few more weeks off. I should have drank water before I started. He's going to take a few weeks off uh, to reevaluate, right? And then he even said that, you know, depending on what the markets do, he's going to go back and, you know, go along the market again, right? Because again, it looks like the uh, central bank shenanigans might work. Uh, technically, they are working. All right, but again, the problem is, and this is something, I don't know if I mentioned that, is it mic on? Yeah. See, I, I, this is one thing I was thinking about, but I don't think I really tweeted this out or even said it on my videos, but since we know the central banks, right, the Fed and the ECB specifically have been buying up the debt markets, right, like crazy, what effect does that actually have on inflation, right? I mean, well, we know what the effect is, it's going to go hyper, but the problem is, how long does it take to show up in the economy, right? Like when you go to the store, when you go fill up uh, gas, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? Specifically, are we going to see that in the July CPI report for this month, right? Because that was my original, uh, you know, what's the word? Hypothesis? <laughs> Hypothesis, right? But, I mean, what, today's June 28th? July 13th is technically three Wednesdays from now, but it's actually 15 days from now. It might as well feel like next year. And then we got the GDP report tomorrow. So obviously we're now getting these contradictory, uh, you know, signals. So, but the good news is because, at least in my case, I'm basically covered in both bull and bear, uh, you know, directions, then I don't really have to worry, right? Because if we crash, then SPXX, uh, SPXS will just go to the moon, right? I actually calculated. It actually should, like, the market cap of SPXS, if we actually get an 80% drop or more in, like, the S&P 500, um, you know, I calculated SPXS should be worth around $97,000 a share, right? Because if the stock markets are worth $28 trillion right now, then 2.8 to 2 trillion dollars of that should go into like you know something like SPXS. So I mean that's just a rough estimate, but the idea is the, the numbers are going to be so absurdly large that it doesn't cost much money to hedge yourself against like a great. It's basically I'm going to basically call it a great depression because when you have we have something this large crash 80 percent. I mean I'm actually catching up to Babylon Berlin and like they actually started. It, they're actually uh, talking about the great crash of september 29th 1929 let's well, kicked off the great depression um yeah i'm thinking that's what's basically going to happen so that's why i'm actually going to remind everyone to look up when you walk out because make sure that people who are jumping out of buildings don't land on you and kill you all right that's actually happened at least in korea all right but you know we've here in new york city we've had a couple uh situations where people were putting air conditioners out and then they actually drop it and it falls down and it hits people Surprisingly, they didn't somehow die from that. I don't know. At least I saw the article didn't mention it. But I mean, I, you don't want to take your chances. That's for sure. Uh, that's assuming you you know you're like me, you live in like a city or something. All right. So anyway, with that with that being said, you know, with the GDP reports going to be out tomorrow, right, June 29th, it's like, can we just get this over with? At this point, I don't care if we go straight up or straight down. What I you know, I just want this to get, I just want this whole thing to get itself over with, all right? Uh, but, I mean, we know, I'm pretty sure that we're already in a recession. The numbers tomorrow will be negative. Now, the funny thing is, that could actually cause stock markets to skyrocket. And the reason is, markets are going to think, oh, we're in a recession. The Federal Reserve now has to cut interest rate hikes, right? They might even have to reduce rates. 
Um, and that technically was what happened in the past. But the problem is, if they do that, inflation will get even more out of control than it already is. So then the Fed has to now hyper increase their interest rates one, one and a half, maybe even two percent. All right. So that's what's making this whole situation very annoying to analyze is because we actually have opposing forces, you know, that are literally the direct opposites of each other trying to vie for control of like whatever the hell this is, right? The stupid prices of everything, you know. And with that being said, yeah, well, stocks, futures are up, right? Because right now it's 8 a.m. I actually woke up at like 6.30 a.m., but I didn't actually start really tweeting anything to like, I don't know, 7.30 or whatever. Playing my games, actually, and then trying to analyze shit and manage crypto positions. Specifically BNB Miner. All right, but crude oil is up, right? Uh, okay, yeah, gold and silver are slightly up. And, of course, not surprisingly, crypto is up. Yeah, some hedge, right? I've been literally seeing this behavior for, like, literally since 2017. So, basically, almost five years now, all right? So, again... When you go long on anything, gold, silver, cryptocurrencies, crude oil, commodities, guess what? Everything go they're all correlated, right? They all go up and down together. They're not supposed to do that, all right? I'm still of the firm belief because we can see the proof right here, all right? If I truly believe the market's going to crash, right, and it's obviously a possibility, all right, should the central bank manipulations fail, all right, I want something that's going to skyrocket when the things crash. So far, the only thing I see that does that is these are these ETFs, right? These reverse bear, these, I shouldn't call it a reverse bear because that's a double negative, but I should be buying, you know, bear ETFs, right? All right. The markets go up, this should go down, which it does. When the markets go down, this goes up, which it does 100% of the time. Why, why take a chance? And on top of that, 24 bucks isn't that bad. You know, because even if this goes down, I don't care because you don't put all your money into this, obviously, because that's stupid. This is this should be looked at more as like Great Depression insurance. That's exactly what it is. And the insurance gets cheaper as the so-called quote unquote risk goes down. All right. Because if you have a high risk of triggering the insurance event, then your insurance rate goes up. Right. I think that's how it works in insurance. But if the risk is practically nothing. Then you only have to pay like, you know, two bucks or something to be fully insured, right? So that's how I look at SPXS. And on top of that, should the, should the stock markets go back to going straight up again, well, let's just say S&P 500 is 10,000 bucks. I mean, SPXS is probably going to be like $8 a share, you know. Yeah, I'll buy some shares, right? Eight bucks a share that can one day turn to ninety-seven grand, or even even if it's just ten thousand. Like I'm literally printing money out of thin air because all of the stock market money, when the things you know blow up, you know they have to go somewhere, right? I always used to think it just goes to money heaven, but but then again, in order for prices to go down, you have to have something to sell with, right? And then you get money when you sell. So obviously, money has to go somewhere. So, some of that being said, I mean, unfortunately, it's so early in the morning that, you know, there's not really much more to say, and Greg doesn't do his video until like an hour, hour and a half, so for the most part, it looks like it's going to be another normal day. Cash does look like it's leaving the debt market as normal, and that cash is going to the stocks, they're going to commodities, they're going to crypto, obviously, uh, not a whole lot, because trade, here's the thing, 24-hour volume is still very low in crypto. And we're going into a three-day weekend, right? Because July 4th is next week. So, I don't know. Uh, there's, there's just too many contradictory things here. I mean, markets are not going to move until we get these stupid economic events, right? Tomorrow, the GDP report. And then after that, then we'll go from there. And then July 13th, when we get the, uh, the June 2022 CPI inflation report, which should be very much higher, all right, because of what we're, what the Fed, the central banks were doing this month, especially as of like what last week or two weeks ago, right, when the debt market was imploding. Ah, oh, it's gonna be frustrating. But yeah, if Greg winds up going back long, I mean, I'm gonna be annoyed. I won't be out, and technically that's a good thing because that means we can go back to what we were doing before, right? Just buy up crypto. Invest in your, you know, DeFi projects, and then I would be okay with going back to covering 
you know, typical whatever crypto projects because the problem is t TVL keeps continuing to drain. I am starting to see it start to stabilize a little bit. And that's, I think, because crypto is stabilizing, the markets are stabilizing for now, right? And then people are thinking, oh, okay, well, there's plenty of money, so let's party like, uh, you know, Germany, Weimar Republic again, and then, uh, you know, throw money into the markets. I don't know. I honestly don't think that, all right? But on the other hand, I know that, you know, central banks are very well, aware, very well aware of what's happening. And they do seem to genuinely be concerned about, you know, shit crashing. <laughs> so... You know, we'll see how it goes, right? We'll see how it goes. And of course, if this thing spikes again out of control, I mean, we're already at... I'm looking at the wrong rate. Yeah. We're already at like 3.25, which was Greg's original sweet spot uh, interest rate. But it's a little weird because the markets are pricing in rate hikes in the July FOMC meeting, right? Yeah, they're anticipating 75 uh, let me see. Yeah, they're anticipating 50 to 75 basis points still. So this is supposed to already, so the 10-year yield is supposed to already go up to 50 to 70. So this should be anywhere from 375 to 4 already. Arks Kathy Wood says the U.S. is already in a recession. Yeah, don't take my word for it. Even fucking Kathy Wood, you know, says we're in a recession. All right. Because, after all, she manages, like, quite a lot of money, like, billions of dollars with the B. And she can obviously see this, right? She can go, oh, yeah, we're in a recession. And I'm sure she probably does a little technical analysis, because she could look at this, because I've done this in the shorting video before. And look, double, triple, quadruple mountaintops, uh, lower highs and lower lows. I mean, this looks really bad, all right? And we've got everyone... <sighs> I mean, we have a lot of fake news people saying recessions next time, recessions next year. You know, no one's actually really saying, "Hey, we got a recession right now." Now they're starting to come out those articles. So we'll see. The markets are either going to crash uh, harder or go up, right? Once we do get tomorrow's report, which is 8:30 a.m. So uh, I mean, I'm going to probably. I don't know when I'll do the video. I'll probably have to wait till after it comes out, and I'll just see what the chaos happens. So, <sighs> it's so frustrating. We're not looking at fundamentals really anymore. We're looking at you know investor psychology and what are the central banks up to today. You know, it's uh, we really do have a managed uh, economy. You know, that might sound bad, but on the other hand, it could also be pretty good, right? I mean. It was pretty good when we weren't, were any of us really complaining when Bitcoin was at like 64K or whatever, right? Were we any of us complaining when we were pulling out like tons of money from Titano or Sphere or whatever DeFi project you happen to be in, right? And here's the most important thing. Having a managed economy like what we have now actually makes things very predictable because you know what to look for, right? So you really couldn't do that in the past, right? Because everything in the past was actually very random, right? You know, I mean, I don't want to spoil Babylon Berlin, but they do actually talk a little bit about that. It actually becomes a pretty important uh, plot point. So, yeah, I highly recommend you watch, actually. Babylon, let me make sure there's no... Because they do have very light nudity, right? Which I, of course, always try to just skip over. But I just want to make sure it doesn't show up on this video because it'll be a pain in the ass to remove. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I, I think this is fine. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't, even, I don't even know what I should link to, but it's a Netflix show, so. Alright. So, yeah. So it has an 8.4 uh, IMDb score. It's really good. Of course, Ryan Tomatoes is 100%. Yeah, this is a really good show. It is a little slow. That's the only thing I don't like about it. Because, you know, us Americans were impatient, uh, instant gratification a-holes, right? Uh, but, yeah, I mean, you could just skip ahead a little bit if you're really that impatient. I actually started doing that, you know? Um, but, yeah. Yeah, really good acting, really good show. Uh, this Volker Brook guy is the main character, and I guess she's like the main co-star. 
Leave Lisa Fries. Freeze. She looks so different than on the in the show. But yeah, really good show. They already renewed it for a season four. I'm not gonna research it because I don't want to spoil myself. I'm still watching the third season. I'm in the middle of it. But uh, yeah, I definitely recommend this show. All right, you know, like the critical drinker recommends X, Y, Z. He should take a look at Babylon Berlin. All right, anyway, this video is already getting kind of long. It's already 15 and a half. So uh, like, subscribe, share this uh, video around. Uh, thank you again to all the old and new people watching this channel. Uh, at first, I wasn't sure if I should be doing these type of videos, but I'm actually starting to see that people are actually subscribing and liking these type of videos. So I'm definitely going to do more of these. And of course, I get all the market stuff out of the way. So that when I do the crypto video, I just go straight into the crypto video. So anyway, today should be a pretty good day for the markets and therefore crypto. Unless, of course, black swan happens like, you know, China invades Taiwan all of a sudden. Right. But aside from that, everything's fine. And then, yeah, there's that Russian default thing. Uh, Greg says nothing burger. Everyone knows about it. So it's no longer black swan. And obviously, if it was a problem, why are the markets going up right now? In fact... Why didn't everything tank on the news of the quote-unquote Russian debt default thing, all right? It, it's nothing. And on top of that, they're defaulting because the West is refusing their debt payments. So Russia has the money. We're just refusing to take it, all right? So it, it's, just more, it's just more warmongering by the piece of shit Western nations, of which, you know, we are most likely citizens of because our government is evil. So... You must always be a bad guy to point and point and blame and stuff like that, right? You know, scapegoating. It's, it's a classic uh, standard operating procedure for any government, unfortunately. At least in the West, anyway. All right, I'll see you in the next video. I don't know what the crypto projects are because I didn't do any research in crypto. Because I was thinking I didn't want to do any crypto videos for uh, today, but... I don't know. I'll just see you in the next video and see what it is, right? And if there's nothing, then I'll see you tomorrow for... Um, Probably post GDP <coughs> GDP report, and then we'll just simply see what happens here. All right. I can't imagine that if tomorrow's report is negative or even positive, the markets will not move. That just this doesn't make sense. So I don't know. Yeah. If you're a gambling type, I guess you could do a straddle in anticipation of tomorrow's uh, thing, because this comes out at 8:30 a.m. So any options that you want to do to play tomorrow has to be done today. Because obviously, unless you have access to pre-market trading, I guess. Uh, but that most uh, most of us don't have that, I think. Um, funny enough, I might link out to this. Let me see. Let's look at this real quick and then we'll end it. Uh, I'm just going to browse it. Uh, we think we're in a recession. We were wrong on the one thing, and uh, that was definitely being as sustained as it's been. Can't believe it's taking more than two years in Russia. We could see inflation has been probably set us up for deflation. What? Great. The super is now cleaning with that stupid... I hate that smell of cleaning fluid. We were wrong on one thing, and that was inflation being as sustained as it has been. Supply chain, can't believe it's taking more than two years in Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Of course, we couldn't have seen that. Inflation has been a big problem, but it has set us up for deflation. Yeah, there's a lot of people thinking that inflation is going to come down. Highest increase, what's that? Hmm, okay, I'm not going to link to this because it's actually a lot shorter than I thought. I don't know. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see, but I'm not expecting anything crazy it happened today so all right i'll see you next video or tomorrow if i don't find any videos today uh so we'll see all right all right i did the outro so all right well i'll let you go thanks